Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting quick tip tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a volume matcher script that will take any audio files you give it and it will make sure that their decibels match up based on the keyframes they can produce. So essentially how the script is going to work is you have two audio pieces that you can have selected and then once you run the script, it's going to convert each of the pieces of audio to an amplitude and then it's going to calculate what the highest value that that audio is going to hit is and based on that even out the audio levels for these two so you can see it's made a quick change to how loud this one is so if we listen to it before the second one is very quiet and then once we run the script, it increases the decibels up to, uh, it looks like 24 extra points are required in this case. So now you can see it's much louder and matching what the other one looks like. So since today is just another quick tip freebie tutorial, this code will be available for free on GitHub, so make sure you go down into the description and check that out. So I'm just going to be going over essentially how this works and how you can use it yourself to either create a UI, use more audio layers and analyze those, or basically increase the number of audio files that you can match. So we start off by just defining a composition, um, which we assume we have an active composition with two audio layers. And then we go ahead and define what each of those two audio layers are. We're going to be comparing two WAV files or MP3 files, depending on what you want to use. And of course, in the future, if you want, you can expand this into more audio files. But for simplicity, we send these two audio files into a function where we're going to match the audio. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have all the layers deselected. Because there's no way in scripting to go, say, right-click, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. There's no built-in function that's going to tell you how to do that because it doesn't exist. So the way you get around it is by using uh, execute command codes and you can check out a video tutorial linked on that below which uh, is basically a whole list of commands you can run inside of After Effects to run any of the menu options that you can see. So after we've deselected all of the layers, selected um, one of the layers that we want to do the keyframe assistant with, we go ahead and execute the command for keyframe assistant 5054 and then after you've done the convert audio to keyframes it's going to create this null object called audio amplitude so what we do is create another variable which refers to that that we're then going to change the in and out points and all the indexes and names so that it matches up nicely to match with the audio layer that it's complementing and then we go ahead and move on to the second layer, make sure it's selected, run the keyframe assistant, move the in and out points of the null object that's created, and change the name. And now for the mathematical part, which isn't actually that complicated, but as you decide to use more and more audio layers to compare, it will increase in complexity. So we create two variables, one called max1 and max2. What this is basically going to do is take our slider control that is representative of both channels, so basically this has keyframe data that represents how loud the audio is. And then we're also gonna take that key layer, which is uh, the layer it's contained in, and put this into a function called get max key value. This is a custom function we set up down here. And all this does is it runs through uh, the, the both channels property with all these keyframes, and it runs through all the keyframes and finds the biggest number. So what it does is it takes the property that you bring it in with, which is in this case both channels and the slider. And this is just going to refer to this property here with all these keyframes. And then what we're going to do is run a loop through the number of keys. In order to do this, you have to realize that um, if you can see this layer is not is very long, there's keyframes that go for over 25 seconds, but the audio clip we have is only 6 seconds. Um, the way we want to do this is only analyze the keyframes from the duration of the clip. If we were to analyze all of these extra keyframes, it would just be a bunch of wasted time and slow things down quite a bit. So what we do to uh, get rid of this situation is we define our min and max of our range we're going to search. The min key index and the max key index. So there's probably a good, I don't know, a couple hundred keyframes right here. Our, our key min is going to be 1 and our key max is going to be right here where this ends. So in order to get the actual keyframe for that, we simply call property.nearestKeyIndex and give it a time. 
When you reference a property and say nearest key index and give it a, a time, which in this case we're just referencing the beginning and the end of our layer, which makes it super easy, it's going to give you the actual keyframe value. So we're going to search between the key min and the key max, which is just going to, again, keep it in that chunk between the in and out points. Then essentially we're going to run through a for loop of that max and min, and if the key value that we're on, if the keyframe that we're going through and looking at, if it's bigger than our max, which is going to be by default set to zero, then our new max is going to be that. So max, our, our max starts at zero. And if we look at our both channels, it starts at zero. Go to the next keyframe, it's going to be 0.12. Well, 0.12, that's bigger than zero, so that's our new max. Then it's going to go to the next frame and keep checking if it's the max. And let's say we have... We have 63 as our max right here. 63 is our new high max. We go to the next keyframe. It's 61. Well, 61 is not bigger than 63, so we're going to skip that keyframe until we find a new max. And essentially, we're going to run through all of these keyframes, and all of this is to do is to get the maximum value. The reason we want to get the maximum value of both our uh, both of our two audio layers is so that we can compare them. We're going to grab the audio levels of each of them which you can access by hitting L on any of your layers, and it will tell you how many dBs it is set to. Then using simple logic, we're gonna set the audio values to become basically equal. If our maximum of our audio layer one is less than our maximum of our audio layer two, then our difference is going to be max two minus max one. If our maximum of layer two is smaller than our maximum of layer one, then we want the difference to be max one minus max two. And then for both of these, we're simply going to set the current audio levels property equal to itself plus the difference we just calculated. So if it says the maximum difference between audio layer one and two is six decibels, we're going to assume it's six decibels, basically add six or negative six, depending on what the difference direction goes in, add six to the other layer. So hopefully that is going to be helpful for you guys if you want to do any audio editing in After Effects. I know there's not a lot of tools out there for doing that because it's not really a useful thing in After Effects yet, but maybe in the future it will be. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos coming out every Monday and Thursday. Thanks again for watching everyone, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.